Have you ever wondered how much amperage draw there is with a Vitamix blender? This Vitamix blender is about six and a half years old. And if you flip it over, you see that it's 11 and a half amps, which when you multiply 120 volts times 11 and a half amps, you get 1380 watts. So that's a lot of wattage, but the newer ones are even more wattage. For instance, the Vitamix 7500 is 12 amps and 1440 watts. The Ninja Mega Kitchen is 12 and a half amps and 1500 watts. And the Blendtec 560 is 13 amps and 1560 watts. So these are capable of using a lot of amperage. And you need to know about this in case you're having trouble with a circuit blowing in your kitchen or you're designing a kitchen, you're remodeling and so forth. You need to know, uh, does this need a dedicated circuit running to it, a dedicated 20 amp circuit? Or can you put other receptacles on the same circuit as your Vitamix or Ninja or Blendtec? So we're going to go ahead and determine this. And what I have to do the job is a Fluke 289 logging meter. It does graphing and logging. And right above it, we have the Fluke IR3000FC connector. And that allows me to connect with my cell phone and get the same readings that are on the 289. Plus, it gets graphing at the same time. This receptacle is part of a 20 amp circuit. I have an AC line splitter plugged into the receptacle. And what this does, the current comes out from the receptacle and flows through these sides of the AC line splitter and it splits the current to a hot side and a neutral side. Therefore you can put a clamp meter or in this case I have a, a Fluke I400 AC current clamp that goes to the 289. I'll show you the connection there in just a moment. But you can put a clamp meter or a current clamp into one of these two slots of the AC line splitter. This is a times one slot, this is a times ten slot. I have it in the times one slot for simplicity for this video. The times ten slot will actually be more accurate, but the times one slot will be just fine for this video and it will simplify things. So we're going to be testing uh, the amperage and you should know that with a 20 amp circuit you shouldn't exceed 80 percent of its capacity. So that would be 16 amps out of the 20 amps. You don't want to be going, you know, 17, 18 amps. Even though it doesn't blow the circuit, that's uh, more than is advised. So in a 20 amp circuit, uh, 16 amps is about as high as you want to go. This current clamp has a lead coming from it, and I'll show you where it goes. The black lead goes to the common terminal, and the red lead goes to the milliamps. And you see I have the 289 turned to milliamps. So we have milliamps here and we have milliamps here. And the reason we have it on milliamps, even though we're going to be measuring amps for a household kitchen, you're generally going to be measuring amps unless it's a very small appliance. The reason I have it on milliamps is that the Fluke I400 AC current clamp gives you measurements in milliamps and then you have to multiply it by a thousand. So whatever measurement you get from the I-400, you multiply by a thousand. So that's why I have it on milliamps, both at the jack and at the switch. I have my blender container about a third of the way full of ice. And there is the juice of two limes in here uh, to have a little bit of liquid to get started. But it's going to be a hard job for the blender because this is solid ice. And what I'm going to be doing is... Uh, there's a top with a hole in it like this, and I have a plunger that pushes the ice down into the blades. So probably each time I push the ice down into the blades, you'll probably get a spike of amperage. On this blender, there's a special setup to reduce amperage spike, and that is you turn it on, and it's just on a low speed. You start at a low speed, number one, and then you just slowly go up like this. Then after that's gone up all the way to 10, then you turn it on, that goes to high. That gives it the highest speed. So we'll start here, that slow, and go a little like that, and then a high. And that's the way it's designed to work. So that's the way we're going to do it. Let's set up the, the 289 now 
for uh, logging and graphing. To do graphing, first press save. You press the button that's right underneath the save, which is F2. So you press that, and now you have your choice of save, view memory, and so forth. And what we're going to need to do is go over to record. So I, so I, I pressed this side arrow one time, and it went to record. Now we're going to press the button right underneath record, which is F1. And press that, and here we have our duration. We're only going to need a, a couple minutes, maybe three minutes. So you can edit, you press the button right under edit, and you see it says zero days. Press the side arrow, zero hours, and five minutes. Five minutes is fine. So I'm going to press uh, the button right. If I wanted that different, I'd use the up and down arrows. I'd go to six minutes or four minutes or whatever. Okay, so now I'm going to press OK. Right like that. And when we're ready to start the logging, you press F2 again, the button right under start. I'll put the cap and the plunger in the blender and secure the top. Okay, so you see the, the plunger here, just at the top of your screen. All right, and you can see over here, we got uh, zero milliamps, which because we're connected to the Fluke I-400, that means zero amps. We're actually on the amp scale. Okay, so we're, we're ready right here. Yeah, okay, I'm going to press start to start the logging. And now I'm over here, I'm going to press this on. Okay, so now I'm going to press stop. Okay, so now we want to see the graph. I want to see the graph of the amperage that was used during the uh, crushing of the ice. So you press trend right below here, and here comes the graph. Okay, that's that's real interesting. You can see, you can see right here we got up over 12 amps, maybe 12.2 or something like that at startup. So even though uh, I started slowly, I started at speed 1 and came up to speed 10 and then hit high. It still had a uh, startup amperage of over 12. I'm going to find that exact amperage in a minute. But uh, right now, what I want to do is I want to take a closer look at the startup amperage of what happened. You see, here's a little point right here. If I press this, this arrow key right here. Okay, press and hold. Okay, see it go over. I'm going to stop right there. And now, if I press this arrow key right here, it zooms in. Okay, press it again. It zooms in again. So you can see right here, we have a dip down and come back. That may have been my first push down with the plunger of the ice onto the blades. And then that's really hard work. That first time that you're pushing it down, uh, it's up over 12 amps, and then you can see it go slowly, 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 slowly. And so we push the down arrow, and uh, here it is again. So you can see there's a lot of up and down. That's where I'm, I'm pushing the ice down onto the plates. Push this again. And uh, now we're back to the original graph right here. All right, so let's, let's look at the summary. Okay, here's the summary. The duration was 1 minute and 22 seconds. 81 samples taken. 39 events. I'm going to say save. Name. We'll call this recording 4. I'm going to save it. Okay, now I'm going to press save. And we're going to get out of record. And we're going to go over here to, to view memory right here. So I use the key, there we go, and I'm going to say view. 
All right, minimum, maximum. Because remember, I wanted to see exactly how high that amperage got. It looks like it got a little over 12. Well, actually, the maximum was 13.9 amps AC. That's because you have to multiply this reading by 1,000 because we're using the AC current clamp, the, the I-400 AC current clamp. So the average would be 4.5 amps AC and the minimum of zero. So we can close that. Let's save, view memory, and, and go up to measurement and over to recording and say view. And say trend, and there's our graph again. So this actually got up over 13 amps. Pretty amazing. And the average was four and a half. That's, that looks about right. My conclusion is that these new whole food blenders really take a lot of amperage, especially at startup. I think it's best if you can design your own kitchen to give one of these units its own dedicated 20 amp circuit. But if you can't, just uh, be warned with the knowledge that it can really spike up. So if you have a microwave going at the same time as you start one of these up and it's on the same circuit, you're going to blow the circuit. If you have a toaster going at the same time, you might be in trouble there. So uh, just be forewarned that these things use a lot of amperage. And my recommendation is just if you have a choice, put it on its own circuit. If you don't have a choice, make sure there's not other big appliances running at the same time. You start one of these up doing a hard task like crushing ice. I'll put links in my video description for the Fluke 289 logging and graphing meter which is a 50,000 count meter. I'll also put links for the Fluke IR3000FC connector, which will connect you wirelessly with your cell phone. And I'll put links for the Amp Probe AC line splitter. Amp Probe is a Fluke company. And I'll put a link for the Fluke I400 AC current clamp. Thanks, I hope this video was helpful.